Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 2.2 .2 of the video series. This will be the last part of chapter 2, where we will discuss an important concept called Fermi Energy Level. And before I start, I would like to thank RS Grassroots Education for sponsoring this video series. You can also find written versions of my videos under the Design Spark website, links down in the description box. In these articles, I put down links to further reference materials for your further reading. These materials are the ones that I previously used before while I was learning about solar cells, so rest assured that they are good ones. So now, there's nothing else to do but to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. One last concept that we need to understand to complete the chapter on semiconductor physics is called Fermi Energy Level. The Fermi Energy Level is something a lot of students struggle to understand because there are too many mathematical equations defining it. But now, I'm going to take a slightly visual and intuitive approach with very little math, so when you actually learn the math, it will all kind of make sense to you. Imagine an apartment building with 10 floors. Each floor has 6 units, except for the 5th and 6th floor, which has no units. I'll explain why in a bit. We can imagine that each floor represents a different energy level in the energy band diagram, with the 7th to the 10th floor representing the energy levels in the conduction band, and the 1st to 4th floor representing the energy levels in the valence band. Each unit is occupied by a resident, in which for our case is an electron. So one unit will house a maximum of one electron. For a semiconductor, there is no possibility for an electron to reside between the conduction and valence band, and hence there are no units on the fifth and sixth floor. We call this the forbidden gap. But we know for our case of a normal semiconductor at room temperature, which is about 300 kelvins, there are actually no electrons in the conduction band. All electrons only reside in the valence band. Now, the concept of Fermi energy level is all about probability. You can ask yourselves, what is the probability of an electron existing at the first unit from the left of the seventh floor? The answer would be zero. We know that for semiconductors at room temperature, there are strictly no electrons in the conduction band. This means that the probability of an electron to occupy the units from the seventh to the tenth floor is literally zero. Now, how about the units from the first to the fourth floor? Again, for a normal semiconductor, since no electrons are excited, all units are fully occupied, and hence the probability of an electron occupying the units from the first to the fourth floor is 1. So, if we were to plot this out, with energy being the y-axis and the probability of an electron to exist at a particular energy level, to be the x-axis, it would look something like this. The 7th to 10th floor corresponds to a probability of 0. The 1st to 4th floor corresponds to a probability of 1. The idea is that the entire graph looks like a step function. The probability is either 0 or 1, nothing in between no 0 0.3, no 0 0.5. It either exists or it doesn't. Okay, now comes the fun part. What if I were to dope the semiconductor? What would happen to the energy probability graph? Let us start with n-type doping. With n-type doping, the dopant has introduced a new floor consisting of all the extra 5th valence electrons. This floor, denoted as E subscript D, representing the donor energy level, is located just right below the bottom of the conduction band, 
I would say at a hypothetical 6.5 floor. At room temperature, these electrons usually gain energy and very easily hop into the conduction band. You can see most of the free electrons will hop to the 7th floor, gradually decreasing in number as we go upwards. This is because the higher up you go, the more energy you require to put an electron into that unit. So, the chances of electrons occupying higher energy levels are lesser. Now, what happens to the graph? Well, let us ask the same question again. What is the probability of an electron to exist at any unit in the 7th floor? Well, judging by the statistics of this diagram, we have 4 electrons occupying 6 units on the 7th floor. I would say the probability is about 4 over 6. Now, let's plot this. At the 8th floor, we have about 2 over 6. There are no electrons on the 9th and 10th floor, so the probability is 0. At the valence band, the probability of electrons is still 1. If we connect the dots, our graph isn't a step function anymore. In fact, it is a curve. As we go higher and higher up the energy level, the probability of an electron to fill the unit at that particular energy level decreases gradually as energy increases. Because again, the chances of electrons occupying higher energy levels gets lesser and lesser. So how about for p-type doping? In p-type semiconductors, the same concept applies, except this time, the accepted energy level of the p-type doping is just a bit higher than the top of the valence band. I would say at the hypothetical 4.5 floor. At room temperature, the electrons in the valence band can very easily hop into this energy level, creating free holes in the valence band. The highest energy level in the valence band usually has the most holes, or the least electrons, and the number of holes gradually decreases as we move downwards the energy level because the lower energy level electrons require more energy to hop into the acceptor energy level which makes the chances of this happening lesser. So the graph will look something like this. It is just like the graph for n-type semiconductors, except that the curve is shifted downwards. So seriously, what is Fermi energy level? No worries, after eight seasons of How I Met Your Mother, we're now going for the big review. Kids, we now have the energy probability graph for n-type and p-type semiconductors. The Fermi energy level is the energy level in which the probability of an electron existing at a state in that energy level is 0 0.5. State is basically the individual apartment units that we talked about earlier. For example, for n-type doping, the seventh energy level has six states, and only three are occupied with electrons. This is a whole other topic called density of states, but we will not cover it here. So here you can see two different Fermi energy levels, one for p-type and one for n-type each corresponding to a probability of 0.5 in their respective semiconductors. We can see that the Fermi energy level is higher for n-type materials compared to p-type materials. But that's not the full picture. It is not exactly higher. If we plot the Fermi energy level with respect to the conduction and valence band, the Fermi energy level for p-type material is closer to the valence band, while for n-type materials, it is closer to the conduction band. This should be the correct definition. Under light doping concentrations, the Fermi energy level 
regardless of whether if it is p-type or n-type, is usually between the conduction band and the valence band, which is in the forbidden zone. Another way to think about Fermi energy level is to think it like the water level in a tank, except that the water is electrons. N-type material has more free electrons, and hence its water level is closer to the conduction band than p-type material, which has less electrons or more holes. Sometimes, if the semiconductor is very heavily N-dope, it can even surpass the conduction band. Or if the semiconductor is very heavily P-dope, it can surpass the valence band. Remember, Fermi energy level is not fixed. Fermi energy level is a function of temperature, light exposure, and doping concentration. That's it guys for the entire chapter on semiconductor physics. In this entire chapter, we introduce what are semiconductors, free carriers, doping, and Fermi energy level. In chapter 3, which is the next chapter, we are going to learn how we can produce something very special by combining p-type semiconductors and n-type semiconductors to produce a p-n junction. Take care and goodbye.